All right, welcome back to another video in our functions unit. This one is on something called periodic functions. Let's learn all about them. Now, when we talk about periodic functions, what we're talking about is the type of function that's made up of different lines that form a repeating pattern over the course of time. Now, these functions are gonna be represented on a graph for us when we see them in a question. And the repeating pattern represents that whatever's happening in this question is being repeated over and over again. So identifying periodic functions is pretty easy. When you see a pattern of lines that you can then see repeat on a graph, well, you've just identified a periodic function. So when we're identifying what type of function we're working with, the periodic functions have a repeating pattern that we can pick out, and then we can see it repeat over the course of time as the x-axis moves along. So finding a specific point in the graph and then finding out how much time it takes to get back to that exact point in the pattern is the all important first step in a periodic function. Now these questions are challenging, but they're always gonna be solved using the same set of steps. So when we get these on an exam, even though they can be a bit tricky, we're licking our chops because we know what those steps are gonna be. Now let's figure out what all those steps are through an example. So take a look at the periodic function on the screen. Now remember periodic functions, the name comes from the fact that there's a period of time in which a pattern occurs, and then that exact same pattern keeps reoccurring time and time again. So as soon as one period ends, another one begins, repeating the same pattern of lines all over again. Now the cycle is just the pattern of lines that we see, and the period is the amount of time that it takes for one cycle to complete. Now every cycle is gonna be exactly the same as the very first one. So once you identify where the first cycle starts and ends, then you know all the others are gonna look exactly like that. So the example that's on the screen is a word problem, and these questions are almost always gonna show up as a word problem. So this specific question is about a runaway roller coaster, one that sets in motion and cannot be stopped until somebody cuts the power. Now, whatever scenario they give us, it's gonna always be a repeating pattern of lines, much like this one. And they're always gonna be asking us, at what point does this function stop, given an amount of time that passes from the start of the question? Now, of course, for a challenge, they're gonna be asking us about a point where this function stops that can't be read off the graph. That would be far too easy, right? So here you can see we're given the time where the function stops. This repeating pattern is gonna go on for 50.5 minutes and then come to a stop. And what they're asking about this point is what's the height of the roller coaster at this exact time? Now, our goal, the key important component of these questions is to figure out how long after the start of a new cycle are we stopping our function? Now remember, each cycle in a periodic function is identical to all the other ones in that function. So all we have to do is figure out how far into a new cycle our function is stopping, and then we're gonna use the first cycle that's always gonna be drawn for us to locate the answer that we're looking for. So really, in the end, we're not gonna care about how many full cycles pass in the question. All we care about is how far into a new cycle that we have to stop this function, and we're gonna base our answer on the first cycle that we see as if we were starting the whole thing over again. So the first thing we have to do in a question like this is figure out what the length of a period is. Now this is gonna be found by very carefully looking at the graph and finding out the point where the first cycle ends and the next one begins. Now in the example that we're given here, we're tempted to say that the period, the length of a cycle, is exactly six minutes long because we can see that the roller coaster comes back down to a height of zero at exactly six minutes. But we have to be careful here. We notice that this is not the point where that pattern of lines starts over again. That only happens after eight minutes, not at the six minute mark. And we can see highlighted on the screen here now that every eight minutes, the exact same pattern repeats. It does not repeat after six minutes. So we've identified the period of the function here. We know how long one cycle takes to complete and that's eight minutes. Now let's get to the point of the question and solve what they're asking for. So what they want us to figure out is what's the height of the roller coaster when the power is finally cut, 50.5 minutes after the roller coaster sets off from zero. And what's so important here, as I mentioned earlier, is to figure out how long this is into the start of a new cycle. And remember, because every cycle is identical, as soon as we figure out how long into a new cycle we have to stop, we can go back to the very first cycle on the graph and answer based on that. So what we'll do here is divide 50.5 minutes by the length of one full cycle. Remember, that was eight minutes. And when I divide 50.5 by eight, I get 6.3125. What that means is 6.3125 cycles pass until this function finally stops. And that decimal, the 0.3125, is how far into a new cycle we're stopping our function. So again, it's six full cycles and 0.3125 of a new one. 
but how long in minutes is 0.3125 of a cycle? All we have to do is take that decimal, just the 0.3125 part, and multiply it by 8 minutes. And that's going to give us the number of minutes that 0.3125 represents. And you can see here that we get an answer of 2.5 minutes. So this is how long into a new cycle that this function is going to come to a stop. Now this is a relief because looking at my graph, I know that I can find out what the height of the roller coaster is at 2.5 minutes. And remember, this represents the exact same height of the roller coaster as at 50.5 minutes because 50.5 minutes was 2.5 minutes into the start of a new cycle. Now at this point in a periodic function question, we always go back to our first cycle and try to answer the question that they're asking. And what they want is at an x value of 2.5, they want to know what the y value is, what's the height of the roller coaster at 2.5 minutes. Now at this point, the height when x is equal to 2.5 can't be read right off the graph. It doesn't pass right through a grid point. So what we're going to do is find the rule that represents the line that we hit when we read up from an x value of 2.5 and then plug 2.5 in for x into that rule to find the y. Now I can see that this line we hit when we read up from 2.5 passes through coordinates 2, 2 and 3, 9. So the first thing I'm going to do to find my rule here is calculate the a value, and I end up with 7 over 1, or just 7 for a. Now I'm going to plug that 7 in for a into y equals ax plus b, and for x and y I can plug in either set of coordinates, 2, 2 or 3, 9. Now I'll choose 2 comma 2 to plug in for x and y, but you could choose 3 and 9 for x and y, and you'd end up with the same answer as me when we calculate our b value. So when I plug my numbers in, I end up with 2 equals 2 times 7 plus b. And after multiplying the 2 times 7, I've got 2 equals 14 plus b. And now to solve for b, I've got to subtract 14 from both sides. And when I do that, I end up with negative 12 is equal to b. So my rule then is y equals 7x minus 12. And remember, the whole point of doing this was to be able to figure out the y value when x had a value of 2.5. So now all we need to do is plug 2.5 in for x and figure out what y is, what the height is of the roller coaster at 2.5 minutes. So 7 times 2.5 gives me 17.5, and when we subtract 12 from that, we get an answer of 5.5 for y. Now what this means is that 2.5 minutes after the start of every cycle on this graph, the roller coaster is going to be at a height of exactly 5.5 meters. And this is especially important because the time we were being asked about, 50.5 minutes after the start of the roller coaster, is exactly 2.5 minutes into the start of a new cycle. And so our answer here is that 50.5 minutes after our runaway roller coaster sets off in motion, we have a height of exactly 5.5 meters. And this is the answer we were looking for. So folks, that is how periodic functions work. Now remember, they're going to ask us to answer at a certain point into a new cycle. So keeping in mind that every cycle is identical to the first one, all we have to do is figure out where our function stops in relation to the start of a new cycle, and then go back and find that answer in our first cycle on the graph. Now write down these few reminders to help you answer questions on periodic functions. First, we have to find out how long one cycle lasts. That's the period of the function. Now don't be too quick to decide. Remember, ours was a little bit tricky and they love to fool us on exams, so be really careful when you're determining the length of a cycle. Second, we have to find out how long after the start of a new cycle we are stopping our function. And it doesn't matter how many full cycles pass, we just care how long into the start of a new cycle that we're being asked about. And we find this out by dividing the total amount of time until the function stops by the length of one cycle. And when we do that, we get a number followed by a decimal. And that decimal is what we're interested in, because it represents the portion of a new cycle until we stop our function. And so the next step is going to take that portion, just the decimal number, in our case it was the 0.3125, and multiply it by the length of a full cycle. Because when we do that, we can determine how much time that decimal represents. And now we can answer the question by finding out that exact point in the first cycle on our graph. And voila, periodic functions are done. Although the work might seem a little bit long, with these steps written out and a little bit of practice, these questions are a home run. Now we're going to check out one more example to make sure we're on top of it.